Hello and welcome to Conversations about Brain Health, hosted by the Neurological Alliance of Ireland as part of our programme for World Brain Day 2022. I'm delighted to be joined by Professor Orla Hardiman, Professor of Neurology in Trinity College Dublin and National Clinical Lead for Neurology. Professor Hardiman, the theme of World Brain Day this year is Brain Health for All. Could I ask you to comment on the challenges and opportunities involved in addressing brain health here in Ireland? Brain health is a very big area. Uh, the brain is the final frontier and, and understanding um, the, the things that can keep us healthy and the things that can go wrong that can lead to neurological disability is really important. Um, as we age, age is one of the factors that, that leads to deterioration in, in our nervous system and, and in the, the health of our brain. So, so having a combination of um, an adequate neurological service uh, that includes specialists like myself um, and, and also engaging um, with the community services, our colleagues in general practice, our, our neuro rehabilitation services and the wider public is really important. Um, we want to prevent people uh, from having strokes, we want to prevent people from having um, memory loss and neurodegeneration. Uh, we want to control people who um, have episodic neurological disability, like epilepsy. We want to be able to control epilepsy, the epileptic fit. We want to be able to control people with headaches and migraine who lose a lot of time um, out of their lives. We want to be able to treat people with Parkinson's better with the newer and better therapies. We want to be able to ensure that people with MS don't get any disability because we have drugs that will do that now. In order for us to be able to do that, we need to have a really well integrated, joined up system of care with, with adequate resourcing for specialists in hospitals, with really good interface between the hospital care and the community care, along the lines of slaughter care, where most of the care can be delivered within the community, but well integrated within the hospital. So linking up the general practitioner, the neurorehabilitation service in the community with the specialists um, in the community and the specialists within the hospitals. That's right, Edmund. thank you. So you've talked about the need for more integration, how we respond to brain health. Um, are there good examples out there? I think we have some really good examples from the Slauncher Care Implementation, Pilot Implementation Programme. And we have two exemplars there. Um, one is migraine and the other is epilepsy. And um, we've we've shown that if you can if you integrate services between hospital and community and and support um, the development of of specialist nursing that you can significantly improve the experience of people with migraine and reduce their needs to continue to attend specialist hospital services. So that involves uh, providing um, nurse led services who can troubleshoot as well. Um, uh, directly with people with migraine and also with general practitioners and linking that up with the really excellent voluntary sector that we have in migraine that's the migraine association of ireland epilepsy similarly it's a it's a much longer standing program we have a really good network of epilepsy centers and we have a, a really good network of epilepsy nurses and we have very good outreach programs now these were developed in pilot form uh, by my colleague colin doherty um, reaching out into the disadvantaged community, the homeless community, and, and, and initiating uh, programs of care for those people that we, we, we normally don't, for whom we not, normally don't provide very good care. If we turn to the rarer diseases, we have a really good example in, in the disease that I look after, motor neuron disease, but there are other examples as well, where we have a really good integrated service. Uh, it needs a little bit of additional support um, uh, to really make this function um, at its maximum efficiency, but we have a large specialist clinic in, in, in Dublin. We have a couple of smaller clinics in, in Galway and Cork. We have um, a multidisciplinary team that's very expert in Dublin that reaches out into the community. And then we work really closely with the voluntary organization with the Migrant Association or with the Multinomial Association of Ireland. And between us, we have um, one advanced nurse practitioner and eight nurses, uh, eight nursing posts that covers the entire country. and provides care to people from the time of diagnosis to the time when they enter into palliative care and, and end of life. And that model is very reproducible. We, we, we're working on a path, pathway now to reproduce that model for other rare diseases. And one of the complex rare diseases that we've selected to reproduce this is, is Huntington's disease, which is a, which is a rare 
very complicated disease that, that spans neurology, psychiatry, hospital and community genetics, um, and long-term care. So a really joint and integrated approach is needed for, for people with that condition. And if we can learn from that, we can we can provide that model to lots of other rare conditions as well. And then looking at one of the other common conditions, um, the uh, multiple sclerosis, we have a, a, a multiple sclerosis clinics now in most of the neurology centers in the country. We need to build our, 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 up our MS nurses. But again, that, that uh, pathway can work really well by integrating care between the hospital and the community. And of course, in Parkinson's disease, we're working with our colleagues in medicine for the elderly because people with Parkinson's are looked after both by neurology and by, by medicine for the elderly. And there's a very nice program that's been, that's been um, uh, uh, developed to, to look at the, the needs of people with Parkinson's disease. We're working with the team that, that has, has, has undertaken that um, um, health research board funded project to, to implement the, the learnings from, from that project, including the development of a really good integrated service of um, care for people with Parkinson's disease, including a lot of new Parkinson's nurses. Thank you so much, Professor Hardiman. And, and just a final question. So we've so much still to get right in terms of how we diagnose and treat neurological conditions. Do you think we need to strengthen our preventative approaches as well in this country? I think there are, I think that's a very big question because um, there are some conditions in, in neurology where, where there clearly are preventative strategies to the presentation of the condition, migraine being an example, or epilepsy being an example, where we can put in services and structures. Um, for some conditions, um, the condition occurs and we can't prevent it. But clearly, when we're talking about brain health, there's a, a huge amount of learnings now around um, cardiovascular health, um, uh, engagement in, 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 um, in midlife, um, with, with new um, learnings and, and, and hobbies and, and interests, uh, keeping our blood pressure down, maintaining our cholesterol, keeping, um, uh, uh, avoiding the complications of diabetes. And we know that in the longer term that the, the types of, of cognitive decline that we see, um, which we sort of use the catch-all phrase of Alzheimer's, but that's a very complicated condition, that we can probably uh, push out the risks of, of the manifestation of cognitive impairment and cognitive decline by engaging in healthy strategies in midlife. Um, so I think there's a huge amount of, of education that we can do to um, people in, in young, uh, young adults and people in, in, in midlife uh, to maintain their brain health and maintain the integrity of their brain health so that by the time to get to my age, which is beginning to be the at-risk age, that that the that the brain is is in tip-top condition, and that the um, the risks that we inherit, the genetic risks that we can inherit, which we know interact with certain environmental risks, that we we can attenuate those risks or reduce those risks by by reducing the environmental insults that can happen to us um, in in midlife that can lead to later decline in in, in later life. Professor Hardiman, thank you so much for, for speaking to us. Thank you.